Go ahead, Your Worship. Thank you, Tracy. Kia ora koutou. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's uh, meeting of the Externally Funded Projects Committee of Kaipara District Council. Uh, and uh, we have a great action packed agenda in front of us. So we're going to make a start with that now. So, but I just like to say, uh, morning, koutou. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm going to commence with a karakia and to kick, kick off our day. Ki hora te marino, ki whakapapu pro namu te moana, hei horahi ma tātou i te rangi nei, araha atu, araha mai, tātou i a tātou katoa. Thank you. So at this point, uh, I'm calling for apologies for today's meeting, and we have one apology, which is Councillor uh, Aaron Wilson Collins would, and all the other elected members are present for today's meeting. Uh, this, of course, this committee is a committee of the entire council. So uh, uh, I'd like to move that apology be uh, received and accepted. And I'm seeking a seconder for that, please. Uh, Councillor Kurnow, thank you. Uh, all those in favour? Please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. <coughs> against. Harry. Aye. Thank you. Uh, regarding item number 1.3, the confirmation of the agenda, we have a full agenda in front of us today. Uh, I'd like to move the confirmation of the agenda as written, uh, and I'm seeking a seconder for that. Councillor Vincent, thank you. Uh, are there any questions, elected members, regarding the confirmation of the agenda for today? There are no questions, thank you. So we're putting that now uh, um, regarding and adopting the agenda for today. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Carried, thank you. Item number 1.4 is the conflict of interest declaration. Um, so elected members, are there any conflicts of interest uh, which any of you may have regarding any of the items on today's agenda? There are no conflicts of interest, thank you, but it is important that we confirm uh, that this is so, that there are no conflicts. So thank you for having done so. Very good. So we'll move on to uh, section number two of today's agenda, which is the minutes of the last meeting, uh, which took place on the 20th of October, uh, the last meeting of the Externally Funded Projects Committee. So we are seeking now to confirm those minutes uh, copy has been circulated with today's agenda. So I'm seeking a mover for uh, the confirmation of these minutes. And this needs to be someone who was present through the entirety of the meeting, please. So that's me. I was there right through. Uh, and I'm seeking a second to one of the people who was also <laughs> there right through. So Councillor uh, Weathy, thank you. You were present right through the meeting. Yes, so as a seconder here, thank you. Um, is there any commentary about the minutes, the accuracy of the minutes? No commentary, thank you. So we're putting this, uh, putting this now uh, regarding the confirmation of the minutes. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Against, carried, thank you. Uh, very good. So we're moving on at this point to the business of the business of today uh, with the first of our um, subjects, which is the Kaihu Valley Trail. Uh, and so to present this, we'll have Joanne Reed, Councillor Delavaris Woodcock. Are you moving the recommendation at this uh, point? Indeed, I am, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Thank you for moving the recommendation, which we're noting the report, and I'm seeking a second for that. Councillor Kurnow, thank you. So this report is now onto the table. To present this is Joe Reid. Uh, so, Morena Joe. Morena, Your Worship. Morning, councillors. Um, so, as per usual for the committee, we'll take all of the papers as read and just provide any additional narrative or recent changes that may have happened on each of the projects. 
Um, for Kaihu Valley Trail, the primary challenge on this project right now is we are still awaiting the letter of endorsement, formal letter of endorsement from the Department of Conservation, which is a requirement for the consent um, in order for the physical works to get underway, the earthworks. Um, the team have been engaging with DOC and um, trying to resolve this issue. Um, thus far, as I mentioned, it is yet to be resolved. As a contingency and to mitigate any further and more long lasting delays to the programme, um, the project team had a meeting with our planners late last week to understand how we could progress with the project and get physical works underway uh, in spite of this letter of endorsement, um, just given the, the consistent delays. Um, and so as a next step, the team is working with the planners to identify the areas along the trail which require dock concession and to then omit them from the existing consent application. Um, with a view that they would then be added in to be an uh, um, additional application later on when that letter of consent is available. Um, the feedback from the planners was uh, supportive of this approach. Uh, I think it's quite pragmatic um, as a way of being able to activate the project on those areas of land that we are able to progress um, as everything else from the consent and perspective is now lodged and with the planner to do their full assessment. Um, so not ideal, but the team does have a contingency in place and we are now activating that plan um, to ensure no longer delays. Um, the Ministry of Business are aware of the delays in this programme, uh, this project rather. So as mentioned prior, they received the same updates that we talked through today. Um, so they are aware of the construction milestone uh, having not been hit, as that was intended to be hit early October initially, and are aware of the reason for the slippage and they themselves have also been um, looking to support us through engagements with DOC to see if there's anything that they can do um, to help with this endorsement as required. Um, and I'll leave it there, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you. So I have I have two questions oh, here, okay. though, um, just to start us off. So, um, and, and it links to what you've just talked about, and it's about DOC. Um, so are there potential sites in each of the five separable portions where DOC has got questions or could it be broken down into the portions? I mean, is it across the entire area that DOC's um, support is required? It's predominantly the upper half of the trail, but as to whether or not it's exclusively there, I can't say with confidence, to be honest, Your Worship, and that's something that the team are working through just to be able to draw that out on the map. And then figure out what what that means for our plan, as far as areas. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you, Councillor Weddy. Question for clarification. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I sort of a, a lot, rather along the same vein. I was just really wanting to find out from Joe. Have have Doc advised the areas of their concern in in detail so that some understanding of that is obtained, or is it a combination of that and just an inefficient processing uh, procedure that they're running? We have not been given specific issues or um, areas to work through with them. No, we've not been given that clear direction of this is a problem and we need to solve it. Um, it seems to be a case of being able to get access to the correct resources um, for this endorsement to be approved. So there's a, a lack of efficiency in the process at their end. <laughs> you may not want to comment, but I'm just saying it's a pity that here is a government department who, uh, um, without giving real concrete reasons or uh, details of the issues they may perceive uh, could be um, uh, undertaken, you know, with this putting this construction of this trailway in, they're not giving us the information and uh, we're being held to rain sometimes, you know, and having to look at other ways of progressing it. So it just seems a bit unfortunate we've reached the situation. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's a statement there, uh, Councillor Weddy, uh, uh, but but point taken. Um, uh, elected members, are there further questions for clarification? Councillor Delavaris Woodcock, your hand is up. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Joanne, thank you for the report. And um, I see there's a theme to the work 
uh, holdups and that's stakeholder, I guess, um, resistance or, uh, you know, challenges with regard to negotiating with the different landowners, including DOC. And I was wondering, um, do you think our council or elected members could have a role to play in some comms through the media to say, um, this is a wonderful opportunity for Kaipara and, you know, this is, you know, this is what we need um, as a bright new horizon and um, can we get all, all, all of the landowners, you know, to bring their best selves forward because um, there's so many benefits down the trail, pardon the pun, and I'm just thinking, is it, is it an opportunity for our mayor and deputy and elected members to to put something in the media to say, bring, you know, bring cooperation and a spirit of um, collaboration to this and let's get it sorted? Because I am, so that's one question. Second question. I just want you to take one question at a time, please, um, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, Councillor, I, I can see your I can see your point regarding that piece of feedback, and it's something that, um, if you will, I'll discuss it with um, our community engagement advisor Amanda, who is closest to the ground on this project, um, and just understand if there is more opportunities that we could be utilising yourselves for um, and your support. Um, yeah, absolutely, and I really appreciate the offer of support. Actually, thank you for that. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so my next question was. It seems to be different uh, from the last map, uh, the position of bridges, quite a few of them, uh, major bridges. And I was wondering if that is, from looking at the schedule, there's amber for budget. But are we looking at a potential blowout with the construction costs of inflation going up? Uh, is that going to be a problem? For the project, currently, it should not be. Um, and that's on the basis that the, the extent of the trail will be dependent upon the funding available. Um, and that has always been the methodology behind this project. And in an ideal world, we'd have nine or 10 million to build it with. We have four. Um, mm. So that is what will be managed by the project manager to ensure we get um, best bang for our buck, really, as far as what we can do from a kilometre perspective. Um, I do know at this point in time, the indicative pricing received around the bridging and airports as within budget. Um, so that's where we were hoping it would come through. So it should be okay. And my final question is, I remember uh, we had a public meeting in Dargaville and the team behind this project uh, presented, um, there being an engineer and Amanda Bennett and, and another uh, project manager and I was wondering, is that team carrying it through, although we've had these delays, are we keeping the consistency of project management? We are. So we've been really fortunate on this project that we have some really committed individuals aligned to it. The engineer, who is an external engineer, uh, Steve Gwillem, um, who is an incredibly knowledgeable man, really passionate for the work we're trying to do in the Kaipara. And he's been on this project um, from before my time. Um, Amanda, whom you've already mentioned, um, you know, will be second with this project as well. And Mark Bell, who is the new project manager, um, really invested in the work that we're doing in the area as well. So we've got a really good, um, quite a close knit team, actually, which is great. To see. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kerno, question. Um, yeah, just looking at the, the last of the project issues around the COVID-19 alert levels, has any work been done by the team just to evaluate how the traffic light system will be different and whether, yeah, are we sort of well set up to manage in that traffic light system when it eventually arrives? So the traffic from a construction perspective, uh, initial view, the traffic light system should not provide too many constraints to works that site. Um, on the logic that site works can actually progress under level three and do progress under level three, um, which is a lot more stringent than 
well, my understanding anyway, of the traffic light system at this point in time. It is something that we're keeping a pulse check on though, to make sure that if anything does come out and then, yeah, it's clarified to be different to our understanding, we'll respond to that. Right, thank you. Thank you. Um, are there further questions? Councillor Wills, thank you. No, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, it may have been asked before, and I apologise. Um, in that budget, has any allowance been made for continuing maintenance of the cycleway after its initial construction? Or if any no. estimates have been arrived at for the cost of maintaining the cycleway and who's going to pay for it? Because it's not a, I don't believe it appears in our LTP. That is a very valid call out, Councillor Wells. Um, so to confirm, there is not budget included in this project for ongoing maintenance. Um, so that would be a no. Um, and we have had um, one discussion in house regarding the, the future of the trail and how we support that as a council. And that's something that needs to be progressed. Yeah. So Thank have you. any estimates been made regarding the, I'm not, I'm not trying to be picky, I'm just asking, have any estimates been arrived at regarding ongoing maintenance costs and going forward in the future? Not not to my knowledge at this point in time, and I believe that's because the value would vary dependent on the extent of the trail. And given that that's still in flex just now until pricings and the specific areas are confirmed. Thank you. Um, so I have a further question. It's about separable portion number four. Uh, and the question is about uh, Taita Marai and the, in the report, it says that there was going to be a uh, hui on the 6th of November that was scheduled. Um, that didn't occur to the best of my knowledge. Uh, that was cancelled. Um, so my simple question is, where are we at regarding both um, that, that hui and the optional routes, if you like, this is the, own, the, the part of the um, entire route, which is not yet resolved um, as far as we see on the map that's presented in the papers here. Um, so the cultural impact assessment has been received, yes. Um, and, but I'm just, I'm just interested in where where is that route going to go how, and how much closer are we to knowing that? At this point in time, I don't believe we are any closer, Your Worship, um, and knowing that exactly. Um, as you mentioned, and I agree to my knowledge that um, Hui did not progress as intended on that date. Um, and so I'm not clear on what date it has been rescheduled for, but that would be the next milestone regarding um, yeah, progressing that discussion around what will happen for that part of the trail. The, um, the team's focus this past couple of weeks in particular has really been around that dock engagement and looking to see what we can do um, for the, the, the full trail as well. Yeah, 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 because the, um, the, um, uh, the large bridge, which is in the middle of that, particular optional to optional sections, if that option is not pursued, then have we got a kind of analysis done on as to if it's the, we'll, we'll call it the riverbank option, it's going to cost A, and if it's the um, past the Urupa and the Marae, it's, it's going to cost X. Yeah. It's that sort of analysis, has that been done to help? Yes. Just add into the mix of, of the complicated story here. Yes, yes. Um, so Steve Gwillem, whom I mentioned earlier on the engineer on the project, um, a, a good month or two ago now actually had um, kicked off that analysis looking at what the alternative options and the implications, budget, time frame and so on, um, wise would be. So yes, that, that has been, um, been started. Okay, thank you, thank you. So but at this stage, there's no confirmation of when that uh, hui will is scheduled to take place. I do not know the date. That's not to say it's not been confirmed. Um, so if you will, I will take that away and confirm with Amanda and come back to you, Your Worship. 
Thank you. Thank you. And, um, and just a final quick point. I'd just like to acknowledge um, that. Thank you for having made the map clearer by indicating where the river is. On it, which is the kind of, um. Indigo blue kind of line dotted line. Um, so that now shows us exactly where the river flows. Um, through the valley, so uh, you can see the parts that are beside the river and the parts that are. Um, on the old railway line and the parts that are somewhere else altogether. So it's really helpful. Um, so thanks to the cartographers for that as well. Uh, okay, are, are there further questions for clarification and elected members? None, thank you. Uh, Councillor De La Barris Woodcock, statesman. Thank you, Joe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a great project. Kaipara and I um, want to say that I've looked around New Zealand. There are many uh, cycleways and trails underway, one enormous one in Christchurch. And so it's really great to see Kaipara getting into this recreational opportunity. And I believe that it's going to be a game changer for, for Dargaville and for Kaipara and for all of us in Te Tai Tokoro to link up with the far north cycleway. And so I wish it good speed. That's my comment. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Councillor Kerno is the seconder here. Statement. Uh, yeah, I just want to um, thank the team for their their quiet persistence and diligence in this space. It's um, as, as long and windy a process as the trail itself will be. Um, and but you know, as Councillor Delavaris Woodcock um, says, this is a major project for the West Coast in Kaipara. It is a game changer. It is, you know, has commercial, social, cultural impacts on us that are, are way beyond what we're even imagining at this point. So, um, it's also a project that's been around for a very long time in the minds of many. So, um, it's really exciting to see us getting this close to actually putting shovels in the ground and starting to build the pieces. Yeah, so thank you, team. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess um, my comment is prompted by the question from Councillor Wills. I think with any of these externally funded projects, they're a capital item and there is, um, always going to be an inference of the need for um, operational uh, expense, including um, maintenance, insurance, um, depreciation, all of those things. So we have to hope that in the total um, equation that the, the benefits, including yeah, the, the various benefits can be achieved um, are not as, are not outweighed by the the capital and operational expenses. So um, yeah, I think that that's a very fair question and something that uh, should have been you know, front and center in deciding whether or not we'd take this scheme on. And one one would hope that um, you know, that would have been covered in the business case. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Are there further statements? A uh, quick, quick statement from me. I'm, I'm looking forward to the Huia Iwi and being able to um, resolve, if you like, the last little piece of the jigsaw, uh, which is still before us, about exactly where the route is as it goes through separable portion four uh, past Taitamarai, um, the and or in that vicinity. Um, I. I uh, and, and looking forward to resolution there. We have, of course, um, both a cultural trail, a rail trail, and we have a riverbank trail. And at various parts of the map, this particular route is on any one of those. And so uh, it, it's a very, very rich tapestry that we're building here. But the exciting thing as we look at this map, now is that the pieces are getting clearer and clearer and clearer. I'm looking forward to Doc um, resolving whatever they need to resolve. 
uh, and uh, for us all to be able to move forward uh, as as speedily as possible uh, because the wind farm is coming um, the mountain bike park is proposed the rest of the developments in the area are, are in train uh, and we are making an important contribution here to um, economic development uh, for the entire west as the other elected members before me have already said so it's an exciting project but i'd also like to congratulate the team uh the entire team that's working in the background here um for very very clear work in a very uh uh complex um uh project all right so thank you uh thank you uh councillor joyce Haki, um, you've just mentioned something in the chat box. Would you like to actually speak to that as well? You're welcome. Um, Moriana Tato, thanks, Joe, for that update. I um, I just wanted to make mention that I'd spoken to someone from Taita Marae just on the weekend, and they'd had some communication between themselves and council, so I'm a little bit confused <laughs> as to what the meeting was that 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 they attended at the Marae where council spoke to um, the issue. So I didn't really want to raise it here. I wanted to go back and ask them who they spoke with from council that updated them on the proposal and they did discuss options. So I'm confused, but regardless, it's um, good to see um, the discussions are on the table or being tabled to happen with the Marae. I know culturally there's some um, concern that they're not quite seeing what the benefit might be for Māori because there's a number of marae that are very close, like there's four marae in, within the Kaihu region of space, Rohe, um, very close to one another, so there's potentially competition. How that would work and be of cultural benefit, I think, is yet to be convinced. So, um I can, I can see other reasons, but culturally, it's it's still up in the air for me. Kia ora. Kia ora, thank you. Are there any further statements from elected members at this point? No further statements. Thank you, Councillor Delavaris Woodcock. Back to you for a closing statement, if you wish. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Right. So at this point, we'll uh, putting this to the vote uh, regarding um, uh, the noting of this report. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Against. Carried. Thank you. Uh, very good. So we're moving on now to our next item, uh, which is the Kaiwaka Footbridges project update. Uh, Councillor Weathy will move this, yeah, and I'm seeking a second for this. Councillor Kerno, thank you. Uh, so, Joe, again, kia ora. Good, uh, thank you. Um, so, the Kaiwaka Footbridges project is uh, progressing touchwood very well, um, and our contractor for this project, Bridget, um, have been performing really well as well um, and tracking very well to date. Um, the detailed design has now been completed and we're still on track for completion of the overall project um, or completion of construction rather um, by February this coming year. Um, and nothing further to add on this one, Your Worship. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Um, the, uh, I have a question and it's in the open project risks section, but it's all green flagged the, for those who can't see the agenda for this item. This is all green lights in our traffic light system. Uh, it's a very, very smoothly run project, but um, there is only a small amount left in the contingency budget. Uh, and this is for the footpaths connecting the two bridges. Yep. Um, so I, I have a simple question. Uh, does that footpath work, if you like, does that include plantings or is it just footpath only? Or does it include kind of beautification and remediation work or is it simply just here's a concrete footpath? 
Um, given the state of the budget around that, it will be minimum viable. So it will be here. Here is a footpath, something to get you from A to B. Um, yeah, wor worth remembering there is a separate um, project in our LTP for the McLean Park upgrade as well, which will do a lot of uh, beautification, let's call it, of the area. Yeah. Lovely. All right. Thank you. Councillor Withy, question. Yes, I guess just touching on the same subject uh, as you were, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it is a bit of a concern that the contingency is down to less than $1,500. Uh, we've already tipped $150,000 out of the reserve contribution fund to get this project up and running, uh, considering the PGF funding was inadequate once the design process had been completed. So, all, um, so I guess, um, Joe, is you've obviously done some risk assessment about um, whether you are going to be pushing the boundaries of that $1,500. Um, what's your comment on that? We, um, where we are right now in the project, we feel comfortable with it. Um, hence why, so it is raised as a risk, but it's green because we feel that actually we know enough about the area now and enough around the project to be able to progress. Uh, I mean, the looming thing in the background, of course, continuing to be COVID. Um, and if there is any future significant change in that COVID environment, what impacts that might have. And um, that's something that overhangs all of these projects, unfortunately. But that aside, we're quite confident that we can conclude these works in line with the budget. And, and with the pre-ordering of materials for the bridges, are those bridges now on, on fixed fixed um, price contracts? Uh, I believe so. Yes, Councillor. I believe the cost things are confirmed. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, Councillor Kernow, question. Um, yes, so a similar question to Councillor Wills's one on, on the Kaihu Valley Trail, just the, the ongoing maintenance of this little development. Um, has there been any discussions so far yeah, within the community or within offices around how that might work? Um, so my understanding is it would be it would sit under the operations maintenance for the parks and reserves okay. um, generally. Okay. Um, as to the costings and allowances for that, it's not something I know off the top of my head, Councillor. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Vincent, question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm just wondering, in terms of this question of how we're sailing so close to the wind with the contingency budget, we know that there is an active community group there that's um, involved in stuff with the upgrading around McLean Park. Uh, is there any way of, of severing a portion of the project out in terms of the footpath part um, to hand over to the community group? Say, uh, I mean, this arrangement has been done elsewhere within the district of, on numerous occasions. Um, and I just wonder if there's an opportunity there just to give us a bit more uh, headroom in the project. Um, and it may be that that's already been exploited to the maximum already, but I just was put that forward as an opportunity just yeah, no i am um, I, I take the feedback councillor um we do um so jenny rooney is our community engagement advisor on this project and um, who is very very um involved with the kaiwaka community in particular and um, so she has been working with that particular group but um by all means i'll definitely take that comment and feed it back and see if there's more we can be doing in that space thank you Thank you. Thank you, elected members. So, are there further questions for clarification on this item? <coughs> no further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, thank you. So, Councillor Withy, please. <coughs> open statement. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, well, it's it's pleasing to see that this project remains on target, and um, I've, conf I've com I have personal confidence in the team. Um, for this project in keeping to the deadline of finishing in February. And of course, if they hit that target, then they're putting less risk on running that contingency um, out and, and over budget. So um, keep up the good work. And I'm sure the community is keeping a very close eye on progress. And, um, you know, let's hope it uh, continues and we do get a, a nice opening event planned for February or so next year. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Councillor Kuno. Um, <clears throat> yes, again, um, thanks to the officers involved for the um, the real detailed 
approach to this, you know, attention to detail and focus on working with the community on it. So uh, uh, thanks to that. And I, I it, the, it this is another one that's been a very long time coming. The community has wanted this for a long time and has had many ideas as to how they might achieve it. So it's really exciting to see it finally happening and it, it will be an enhancement to the Kaiwaka township um, environment. So yeah, it's, it's really exciting. I'm looking forward to February. Um, and yeah, encourage staff to um, manage that con that tiny wee contingency that's left as best you can. Yeah. Thank you. Are there further statements, elected members? Um, quick statement from me. Yes, congratulations to the team. I I think the fact uh, there's extraordinary work going on in the background. We've seen. Here and there was a lot of um, what I call fast footwork, really, by by the team in the recent uh, months, because uh, the southern bridge has had to be moved because of of a wastewater proposed new wastewater pump station that is uh, identified in these reports, uh, and it's an important example of the council working as an integrated entire uh, organization that's taking account of these things rather than just one part <laughs> ahead of building a bridge and then going oh no we now have to move it and it's in the wrong place and the wastewater system then all becomes highly complicated so uh so uh, you know i'm really encouraged to see those sorts of uh, uh initiatives uh, uh coming through in that kind of whole of council thinking actually that's going on here um, and very much looking forward to these bridges being uh, up and running and the community <laughs> running across them very, very soon. Um, yeah, Kaiwaka is our important gateway to Kaipara and to all of Northland from the rest of the country. And, and we've got a major, major uh, op opportunity here regarding McLean Park and all these bridges and the beautiful little gateway town. So um, well done, everybody. Congratulations to the all the officers and um, to Tim Manning for his management of this project, especially. Thank you. Further statements, elected members? Coming back to Councillor Weedy, would you like a closing statement here? No, no, just uh, nothing further apart from keep up good work to Tim and his team. I think it's going really well. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So we're putting this to the vote now. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Against Carrie, that report is noted. Thank you. Uh, moving on now to the uh, Mungify Shared Path. Councillor Weedy will be moving this. And I'm seeking a seconder for this. Councillor Delavaris Woodcock, thank you. Uh, jo. Thank you. Um, so Mungify Shared Path um, having been split into the two phases, as we know. Um, so phase one, the existing um, roundabout shared path section uh, is tracking well. It's actually tracking just under budget, believe it or not. It can happen. Um, and we are on track to complete that um, Molesworth roundabout, the asphalt construction by the end of this month. Um, and so once that is completed, we should see quite a significant difference in the area as well. I'm sure those that have been through Mungify recently are already seeing the quite um, drastic difference in that space. Um, so end of this month will be a really nice milestone to get to and really see that starting to open up. Um, so going very, very positively there. Um, we are still awaiting the formal confirmation from Whakakutahi for the funding for phase two. Um, it's not an area of concern. We're just working through the process with them regarding getting that formal appointment. So we've had verbal confirmation. Um, now it's a case of tidying up paperwork. Um, on that basis, the um, consent itself would not be lodged until such a point that we have that funding confirmed. Um, and so the timeline that you see in this report is reflective of that. Um, but overall, we're not concerned regarding that completion date of phase two. We believe it still sits within target, even with that bit of slippage regarding the funding confirmation and the consent lodgement. Um, so tracking well. I'll leave it there. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Weddy, question for clarification. 
Yep, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Joe, um, you've mentioned here that uh, with the design modifications, et cetera, that had to be incorporated with the bridge for phase two, that you're pushing the budget and you're about $87,000 above what was um, originally forecast, which would probably put it outside the available funds that Waka Kataki would hopefully be making available to us. You've also mentioned that <clears throat> phase one is currently tracking a bit under budget. Is there an opportunity to um, uh, take any funds that are surplus in phase one and put them against any overruns in phase two to try and balance things out? Yes, absolutely. So from the from the MB perspective, from the Ministry of Business lens, it's all the one project. Um, so okay. how we apportion the budget within that is at our discretion. Yeah. Thank you. That's excellent. Good. Great, thank you. Um, Joe, I have a question uh, and it's about phase one. And so this is about the uh, roundabouts in the village part. Yeah. And I'm yeah. looking here at your report regarding construction complete, targeting to complete the intersections by Christmas. Very tight program though. Now, and I've read and read your report here trying to just get exactly if you like what complete by christmas means can you just explain to us in really simple terms what complete the intersections by christmas what people would be able to expect to see if we can hit that if we can hit it and i i'm a huge believer of under promise over deliver to be honest your worship so i'm nervous in saying this um if we can hit it, it would be that there's no traffic management on the intersections as to all intents and purposes from a public perspective, complete. Um, the, the reason why I'm hesitant in saying that is, you know, the team are working tremendously hard in order to try and meet that milestone. And that's been based on the feedback that, you know, yourselves and other members of the community have given us around that importance. And um, so they really are prioritising it. It does look like there's an opportunity. And there's a glimmer of hope we could make it, um, but I'm just reluctant to share that too too broadly and too confidently in case we don't, because it is it's a lot of work involved. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, un understood. But okay. Uh, uh, but thank you for making that clear for us as a as an indicative interim potential possibility for us at this point. Um, Question, Councillor De Lavaris Woodcock, then Councillor Weddy, then Councillor Kerno. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, my questions, uh, I have two. Uh, so, a, a, a question that is now becoming um, kind of a pattern of inquiry for our council is what is the budget allocation in the long term plan for maintenance of this shared path? That is not something I know the answer to off the top of my head, Councillor, but I will take a note and come back to you if that's quite all right. Um, that's, and just that's, confirm. that's fine. Um, my second question is about the possible uh, cost to the ratepayer for dealing with the uh, contaminated land from the petrol station. Is it's from reading the report, it indicates that. Uh, we would the council would have the burden of proof to to uh, connect that land contamination with the prior operations of a petrol station. Uh, that seems really unfortunate because uh, you know I think the integrity of that company they should they should claim responsibility and uh, do. What's going on in that department and what do you think those costs might be to deal with that? Is that a budget issue? Um, so to confirm, it's not a budget issue, um, and the most recent update on that actually, which apologies for not including it in my initial update, is um, the external specialists who have done the analysis of the land contaminant have, have confirmed that they cannot confirm it is entirely due to fuel leakage. In other words, meaning that we cannot confirm that it is entirely the responsibility or liability of the gas station himself. Um, now, what is fortunate in this situation is that actually 50% of the costs surrounding this 
are covered by North Power because this is the area of works where we were doing um, shared works with North Power for putting down their lines. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's only 50% that we carry ourselves. That's already accounted for in the analysis of the budget. So Tim was across that at the point of writing these reports. Mm -hmm. um, it also, as it happens, it appears that the land itself is not terribly badly contaminated. And we've been advised that if properly aerated, then it actually can be used in the project elsewhere. Um, so that's something that the team will look to do as well, so that it's not um, it's not wasted investment, not wasted spend. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and the other question is, with the shared path creating uh, more curbs, and is there any design element to account for the roading network runoff? in the filtration of, of, of those stormwater volumes. Is there a uh, protection design for, for the estuary? Yeah, so stormwater um, implications are taken into account as part of the design when installing the curbage and shared path and even a green array around that space, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Th those are my questions answered. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Weddy, then Councillor Kurnow, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Joe, just centering on your comments relating to um, loss of business compensation to those uh, owners of the businesses in the block between the corner uh, supermarket and the butcher. <clears throat> Obviously, the whole of Mungify has um, suffered quite a significant um, drop in in uh, activity and business revenue through the border lockdown with Auckland. Uh, this is this area is very very sensitive to that, so I guess this is going to be quite a a um, uh, a complex uh, discussion slash no negotiation with those business owners to try and establish what in fact was the percentage of business that they lost due to uh, the actual roadworks rather than just the border control. But my concern is <clears throat> if there's any suggestion, and I sort of feel it's implied in your comments um, that it could be uh, perhaps higher than originally thought. Is this going to be an impact against the budget or is this an external um, account this goes against? So we would look to meet these costs through the project budget and that's something that Tim does have a placeholder amount in place for to ensure that we're accounting for some risk there. Um, the, the process around um, what what will or, or what can or cannot be claimed um, will be carried out independently by a uh, accountancy firm. Um, so we we outsource that piece of work and they'll do it based on policy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Kerno. Question. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just going to tease out that um, the the plans for Christmas. Obviously, fingers crossed, it's not a problem. But have you, I mean, presumably you have plans for what happens if we don't quite hit that Christmas deadline and we are still a, a work site at that time? And, and to what extent are you working with the community on that um, just to sort of understand what would make it as tolerable as possible should we fail that Christmas deadline? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so should we not be able to achieve that um, stretch target of Christmas? Um, mm -hmm. Then yes, we, we have been working through that um, plan B um, of, okay, if we have to have works happening at site, what does that look like and how can we best mitigate the impact to tra uh, passing traffic, pedestrians and so on? Um, the public have been really supportive of the project to date. Um, and have given some really constructive feedback, especially around the traffic management, which um, United Civil and Tim have responded to on each instance. So we would look to continue in that same vein as we get into early December to understand, okay, this is the proposed plans, how could it work? And I think most importantly, what we've learned today is actually flexing to the feedback at the time. So the plan doesn't need to remain the plan if actually in reality it's not working well for us. You know, if we start seeing the issues, we change it from the next day and being very reactive to the environment at the time. Mm -hmm. That's that's good to hear because there's also the added issue with you know, the last three months 
Auckland's been locked down, so Manga Fire has been significantly quieter than it might normally be. And it looks like those that that floodgate will be open by the time we hit Christmas. So they, they yeah, it's sort of going to be interesting the modeling that we're doing and the planning around sort of it, it's yeah. Um, that there could be significantly higher um, traffic through the area than we imagine. And I think that's definitely part of, I suppose, why I say that being flexible as well, because I don't think any modelling today can, you know, can really prepare us for what we may or may not experience come middle towards the end of December. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Elected members, are there further questions for clarification regarding the Mungafai Shared Path project? No further questions. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. So uh, at this point, uh, Councillor Webby, thank you for opening statement here. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, no, look, I, I take my hat off. I think the project team is doing remarkably well, and in fact, they've even it was only a month ago after the um, period where they had to stand down because of the um, increase in alert levels of COVID in Mangafai. They've tended to seemingly made up some ground there and we're now pushing back towards the target of getting it done by Christmas. I have to admit, I go past or through there pretty well every day and or every other day and the progress is quite noticeable on a 24 hour basis. And I I'm pretty sure that by the end of November, we're going to have a very clear understanding of whether or not we're going to have the thing freed up completely by Christmas. So um, if the weather holds, I'm very, very optimistic about that. The other thing that I think is <clears throat> I'm getting constant feedback from some of the business owners in the area about, again, and I think I've said this before, how good the communications are between United Civil to the business owners about what's happening. And, uh, you know, I often wonder whether or not I'll get a I get a broadside about how much business they've lost or something like that. But no, it's usually about, oh, it's going well and oh, but they're keeping us informed and everything else. And that's one of the few projects that I've been experienced with in council where in fact you're getting that sort of feedback on a consistent basis right right across the board. So that's a tribute to the way in which the uh, project team has been operating and uh, continues to operate. So well done and I hope it keeps going. But I have to admit the whole of the community has got their eyes on this project. It's probably the most watched project we've ever had. So uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Delavaris Woodcock. <laughs> uh, yes, I my comment is that this is a great project. Uh, the <clears throat> accessibility for all people between their housing and jobs and natural spaces by means of active transport, that means on their feet or pushing prams with babies in there or mobility scooters or uh, skateboards or bicycles. Awesome. Uh, we are all very excited about this and uh, I've been watching it with um, great interest. And I also have noted the commentary from the community that the first round roundabout has made a marked difference to the flow of traffic. So uh, great work, Joe and the team and Tim Manning and um, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Further statements from elected members. Uh, uh, quick statements from me. Uh, this project is, is just is running very well from the perspective of how um, there are so many challenges regarding the lockdown and the border with Auckland and workers not being able to get through. And yet this project has been managed well through that, uh, through those challenges. And what we're seeing now, if you like, is that um, what was weeks of down tools has actually now been caught up arguably by the fact that um, the community is smaller in size than what was anticipated to be at this very moment in time uh, because of the Auckland border still being in place. So using uh, uh, that, uh, turning that bad situation to advantage, if you like, is um, is is really smart um, by everyone. And of course, uh, those people, when they return, um, they're going to get 
a heck of a surprise um, because it'll be some kind of like Rip Van Winkle kind of fantasy that they'll go, what is this place? Because when they left months ago, it was looking nothing like it's going to be looking uh, in come the middle of December or Christmas. So look, um, the sooner... <laughs> soon we stop talking about it and everyone gets on with doing the actual work, um, the better. Um, but this is um, um, a really, really significant project. And uh, 50 years from now, this will all still be working and flowing smoothly. And, um, and that is a really significant legacy project by this council. Um, that, uh, and I'm really, really delighted to see it coming through and the sensitivity in the work regarding the sketch that we have for the bridge, uh, proposed bridge across um, from the causeway uh, and that amazing um, artists and rendition, which is in our papers of that is really special. And the sensitivity, of course, regarding the ferry turns. You know, uh, we're a council that's listening to all of those issues and factoring all of those key parts of the community into all of this project. So this is for everyone. So and it's going really well. Congratulations again to Tim and and the team and to the team at United Civil and looking forward to meeting the new uh, project manager as well. So, uh, yeah, it's going very well. Thank you. Any further statements before we go back to Councillor Weddy? Councillor Weathy, closing statements? No, nothing further for me. No, I think it's all going well. This is a very well run project. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Right. So we're noting this report now. So all those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the unsealed roading network project. Uh, which is also another great success. Councillor Kurnow is moving this, and I'm seeking a seconder for this. I'll second that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, as you say, another um, great success with the Unsealed Road and Network. Um, we are now um, almost 34% complete um, to budget. Um, and we've got about 55 kilometres completed to date. So that's kilometres of road completely rehabilitated and closed off, um, which is tremendous. Um, in regard to, I'd received one question about the recent weather events and what impact that was having on the roading network, the unsealed roading network in particular. Um, so just to confirm with the tremendous amount of rain that we've been having this spring, um, there's only been one true incident um, on the Unsealed Road and Network programme. Um, so the, the remainder of the roads have remained in the condition as intended, um, which is a good test actually um, of the quality of the work being laid. Um, the one incident relates to um, Golden Stairs Road, um, whereby it was unfortunately an um, error in judgment regarding starting the works in advance of a um, severe weather event. And unfortunately, um, the contractor got caught in the hop and had opened the road up to a too large an extent for the rain that then came over the coming days um, and did result in some mud wash across that area. Um, they put the remedial steps in place, um, so put in place um, traffic management to reduce the speed on the road down to 50 kilometres to ensure safety, um, and then monitored the site and kept the crew there on standby to operate as required. Um, should it get to a dangerous condition. Um, and that's now been worked through that the weather is drier again. Um, so it's been remediated. Um, but other than that, um, everything else has um, stood the test of these, uh, these rain events. Um, nothing further to add there, Joanna. Uh, thank you. Uh, elected members, are there questions for clarification? <laughs> Councillor Wills, please, then Councillor uh, Kuno, then Councillor Vincent. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Joe, I, your last sentence, you said there was no other issues. There's been a regular correspondence of concern regarding the Mama Road, which was one of the first roads subject to this new style of surface covering. Um, and that's been quite ongoing um, and quite significant, the impact that the weather's had on that road. 
Um, can you um, update us on any remediation work that's been required that, that alters the nature of the construction that was originally done, please? Um, so Omana Road itself, I'm not across that specific one, to be honest, Councillor. So what I will do is I'll take that away and speak with Bernard, who leads this programme, and understand for that road specifically. Um, what I can update on is from when this programme began, it's been very much a test and learn environment as well, um, whereby the, the contractors and the crew who have been going out and doing these works have been taking the findings as they go along and implementing it into what is known as our centre of excellence. And that's the methodology around the materials that we use and the, the approach to which we're laying these roads. Um, so my belief would be that the quality is improving over time based on the learnings. Um, but if you if it, please, I'll go away and find out about Omana Road and come back with some clear um, answers to that one. Um, yeah, probably you've been left out. Of, thank you, Joe. You've been left out of the loop, but there has been quite a bit of correspondence with the mayor's office and with um, NTA over some of the significant issues on that. And it was it was the initial test bed road that was done under this new style of construction. And I do support the the concept. I'm not arguing with it. I'm just saying that there were have been issues raised that you probably should have been included in the loop, so you had an understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vincent, then Councillor Kerno, then Councillor Delavaris Woodcock. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just seeking clarification like regarding that incident on uh, Golden Stairs. I mean, and I suppose that as with wider application as well. I mean, do the does the contract provide for people to take into account? It's not just water or sludge or slurry washing off the road. It actually goes somewhere. Are there any um, re uh, silt retention structures put in place to protect the, the waterways that they're going to feed into? So I believe that would be part of the remedial work done by the team, is to ensure that any any slippage that has happened is taken away from that area so as to not damage that area as well. I, I was thinking more in terms of as a preventative because um, obviously once it's got into the stream, it's in the stream. There'll be a stream. Um, preventative, do you mean in the sense of putting in like um, bunkers to the edge of the roads and that, that sort of piece? Oh, or? Sometimes people chuck a hay bale in a, in a water course or um, some other uh, a silt fence or something like that. Okay. Um, if it's okay, councillor, let me take that one away for Bernard as well because I, I don't want to give you wrong information on that. I'd rather find out. Um, yeah, it, it might also be beyond the scope of the project. It might be talking about in terms of um, just best practice and um, road uh, work operations. Thank you. But I would like to know. Yeah, no, I'll find out for you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kuno, Councillor Delavaris Woodcock. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I just going back to that Golden Stairs event. Just. Um, is there who who pays in the instance that obviously there would have been additional costs because of the additional traffic management and possibly some additional activities to try and remedy or remediate the 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 runoff of the mud wash as you call it? Is is there any indication? Is is that just absorbed by the project or is there some kind of penalty on the contractor for for that mistake? So that will be worked through with the contractor to understand where liability sits, um, given the nature of the forecast event and um, in the decision to go ahead. Yeah. So there is that process, right? There's the process, yes, yeah, right. absolutely. There's um, one other question. I just had a little bit of feedback from, from the community about the rip and remake um, approach. And I'm just wondering, are you getting any sort of adverse Comment, commentary or reports on that. Um, I know in one place somebody got got their own grader out and re rebuilt it after a rip and remake. So yeah, it's, yeah, because it was because I think the the challenge with the rip and remake is initially when it's done it's quite spongy um, because it contains a lot of other matter and over time that I imagine will settle. But the initial responses. Yeah, not necessarily positive, and I'm just wondering if is, yeah, is that a, a theme that you're seeing? 
No, it's not one that's coming through, but there often lies the value of these sessions as well, because I believe um, yourselves actually, you know, receive this feedback a lot more forthcomingly than we do at times. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, no, I'll, um, I'll take that on board as well and ask some questions. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. That would be helpful. Thank you, Councillor De La Varis Woodcock. My question is regarding the number of roads that are still yet to be started. How will that work with the dry summer coming up, or it could be a wet summer, but also within project budget? Are we tracking to achieve the full length of road rehabilitation that we uh, set down to achieve with this project? We are tracking well to budget. Um, so currently the budget is tracking green, which means that we intend to deliver the full scope as specified. Um, as discussed before, I, I think several months ago now in this committee, um, the, the selection of roads and the, the programme as it were, so season one, season two, season three, is very flexible because the team has been taking a um, logistics based approach of working through specific areas when the crew is there or if there is a part of the region that might have worse weather than another section, for example, prioritising based on these sort of factors. Um, there is a limited amount of roads currently on the list which are not yet started, um, I believe about 30 kilometres, give or take. Um, but yeah, I think the team is uh, tracking confidently to conclude, and that will be an awareness of the, any forecast um, summer conditions as well. That's something that we keep um, quite a close eye on. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Just, just a question from me. It's on exactly the same point that Councillor Delavaris Woodcock raised. Um, would it be possible? So, I'm looking at your report on page thirteen, so the very last page of the report. Uh, would it be possible to have further, um, um, like kind of? graphical depiction like a pie chart kind of i'm thinking pie charts or table bar charts or whatever of of sh of showing um what we said we would have been been done by a certain time and what has actually been done so how we are tracking because even though this like for example and just um just showing your final table um says that last month we said um, there were 48 kilometers, 0.3 kilometers completed. And this month there are 55 completed. All, all good, all good. Um, was it supposed to be 100? Were this only supposed to be 30 kilometers? What, are, what is the target? If we're asking a governance related question, like are we on target here? Mm -hmm in that kind of way um, because um, you've, you've enumerated exactly what the roads are and exactly what the lengths are and that's wonderful but but if we're asking governance related questions then it's like well we're ahead of target because if as councillor de Lavaris woodcock says if we would have a wet summer then the works could continue through the summer yeah so does that make it better faster quicker uh, for example, so are there some measures um, that you may be able, um, I, so it's a, a, an opportunity for you to take that away. I'm not asking you to engineer any of that in front of us right now, but it's that mm -hmm. those sorts of questions that governance wants to know that we can, again, tell the community we're ahead of target on this, we're behind target on this, we're achieving exactly what we said, because right now we just say, well, we're achieving all of this and it's wonderful. But um, but that notion when you all have your targets um, that we can't necessarily see, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, and I actually really support that idea. I think that would be a really really nice visual to have. Um, what I'm almost picturing is some form of line chart showing the targeted kilometers per month versus actual kilometers, and you can see that growth over the past twelve months. Um, so yes, no, leave that one with me. Um, definitely can't whip it up right now, but. We'll get yeah. something to you for next month. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Are there further questions for clarification here? 
I have another question, and it is about the rip and remake trial that's that's explained very carefully in our papers. So thank you for that. Um, but the rip and remake trial, um, which is something the community's long raised complaints about about all the good metal that's ended up just off the edge of the road. Um, how many kilometres would be potentially going to be um, remediated with the rip and remake if it works? Do we know that? Um, I don't know that. Bernard might know that. Um, so yes, let me take that one again away, if that's okay, Your Worship. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. And because the, the rip and remake is a different process from the uh, complete remediation that's already gone on with that 55 kilometres, yeah? Correct, yes. Um, and so the, my understanding would be if the trial is deemed to be successful, then there will be certain criteria of roads which meet that um, specification for that methodology to be applied. And other ones where it does not meet the specification would fall under the normal um, process rather than rip and remake. Okay, thank you, thank you. Look, so th I mean, this is all sig potentially significantly re um, uh, rehabilitating very, very, very large areas of Kaipara if this works. So, uh, uh, oh, Godspeed. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, are there further questions for clarification? <coughs> No further questions. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, uh, Councillor Kuno. Um, <clears throat> not a not a grand speech from me. Just um, a basically a repeat of last month's. It's, um, seeing that table at the end with all the ta all the roads that are either completed or underway, and the few that are not started, um, is is really heartening. Um, and sort of. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm interested to see how it flows through in terms of our overall statistics around feedback on roading. It'll be really interesting to see how that that impact um, comes through. So, yeah, thank you to the team for their focus and their um, diligence um, progress through this project. Thank you. Thank you. Um so, a quick statement from me as the secondary again. Thank, thanks, thanks to the team. This project has has seems to be going from strength to strength, as far as I can see. Uh, and the rip and remake trial and the potential to stretch the dollars even further is is all good value, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the regarding the Omana Road piece, which Councillor Wills has has referenced, um, I just saved my comments till now into a speech. Um, there seemed to be a um, uh, some confusion that occurred um, and that the that very first road had uh, was actually um, if you like overgraded and and damaged um, in by subsequent grading events uh, and that has been worked through um, with um, by the engineers um, so my office was alerted to that within minutes of that having taken place and uh, and and I've been working on that right through including with very very um, concerned locals who were absolutely loving the Omana road that had been created uh, as our first of our PGF fixed roads and were particularly upset that it had been damaged by uh, road and contractors so um, so that Second fix, if you like, is is taking place. So, um, it it is uh, really significant, though. Um, and the important thing for us is to be um, fixing our roads. And as we know, this is the most important part of what uh, our people um, are looking to the council for. So, go the roads. Uh, elected members, are there further statements here for this item? No further statements. Thank you, Councillor Kuno. Closing statement. Um, nothing further to add. Just keep it up. Keep up the good work. Lovely. Thank you. Putting this to the vote now. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Against. Aye. Carried. Thank you. Uh, we're moving on to.
Pie Water, and this will be our last item before we break for a morning tea. So, speaking of water, uh, so the Kai Water Project. So, I'm seeking someone to move this item. Councillor Kerno, thank you. And a seconder for this. Councillor Delavaris Woodcock, thank you. Joe. Thank you. Um, so for Kai Water, at the time of writing this report, um, the schedule was tagged as green as we were intent on planting both site one and two um, mid-November. Unfortunately, the recent weather events have made that not possible. Um, Northland Anchor contractor um, made the call last week um, when they seen the forecast coming through that whilst they could get out of that point in time to plant, actually it, it would just, um, yeah, it would not yield a crop um, with the weather coming so quickly afterwards. Um, based on that, um, they have been out this week to do an assessment of the ground conditions and they're just not recovering at the pace that we would have hoped for. Um, I don't know if anyone's been out to the site recently, but um, they're, they're very boggy, um, very, very wet there. Um, based on this, um, Northland Inc. have revised the plan and they are now hoping that the few days of finer weather with some wind as well will enable the land to dry out that bit more promptly. Um, and so site one, the Munganui Bluff site, is now targeting planting on the 26th of November. That's a Friday. Um, and site two, the Tokopuro site, um, is still to be confirmed, but looking at roughly the 25th of November, thereabouts. Um, to confirm that Northland Inc. have managed the resources around us, so they do have the contractors and equipment available for these revised dates, they have confirmed. And as mentioned before, we do have all of the seeds there available as well. It's now just a matter of the land being in a suitable condition for it to be worth um, planting. Um, you, you will have noticed that we did have placeholder dates in the diary for um, opening events or community events rather um, for both site one and two. Um, these events will now be put on hold um, and likely to occur something at the start of the calendar year. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, naturally, the delay in plantation itself and the conditions of the ground. Um, but also, in light of the recent um, COVID restrictions and the uh, uncertainty as to just where we are surrounding the group events and group gatherings, and especially in reflection of uh, Northland's stance in particular, or standing currently regarding vaccinations, um, was uh, actually pushing it out that little bit to hold a real community event um, might well be the, the safer, more responsible approach. Um, in the meantime, we will continue to share our learnings um, using the web page and using the primary stakeholders um, and gathering the collateral um, doing various things such as uh, video diaries, photo updates, stories, everything that we can do digitally, really, to ensure that the learnings from this project are retained. And that's everything there. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, thank you. Uh, just before we move into questions, uh, just uh, Tracy Dean, if you'd just please take note, you may have captured, um, Councillor Larson appears to have left the meeting. Um, I didn't see uh, what time he's left the meeting, but but he's certainly not on the screen now. Thank um, you. That's within the last couple of items. Thank um, you, uh, He was here through the Kaiwaka footbridges item. So, Sometime after then, uh, if anyone else noted when he left, um, please share that. Thank you. Um, thank you, Joe. Uh, that's really, uh, really clear. Um, so are the elected members, are there questions regarding the high water project in this extraordinary season? Councillor Delavaris Woodcock, then Councillor Kerno. Yes, extraordinary season indeed. Is when these seeds get in the ground, um, has the project leader considered that it might be such an unusually wet summer that there would be uh, problems with actually irrigating for creating further waterlogged soils and not good growing conditions, i.e. putting, uh, it, making redundant an overhead irrigator, for example, or an in-ground 
irrigate, irrigation system because there's so much rain. So that's something that Northland Inc will be working through as manager of the site for the crops. Yes. Thank. That's my question. Thank you. Councillor Kurnow, question. Um, sort of following on a little bit from that, they, we've, we've talked a lot about a second crop and I'm just wondering what, what your thoughts are around the impact of this delay and the possible ongoing boggy groundness of it all um, and the impact of that on the, on the chances of a second crop. So not yet knowing what the impact of that will be and we'll know that greater once we have this initial crop in the ground. Um, so whenever that ends up being planted and then the conditions of the ground thereafter. Um, so yeah, and hence the, the team has been quite um, agile with that second crop of, you know, they've got ideas in mind, They're, they know it's something that needs to be provisioned, but now is not the time to try and build a detailed plan. I do note Councillor Vincent just commented as rice as a possible second crop. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I understand. Yeah, you, you, it's, um... Thank you. Thank you. Of course, um, ha has there been consideration done to not doing a first crop, but doing a second crop in the, what is normally the drier part of the summer? Um, using the irrigators. So actually not even putting something in the ground until February or March and saying, well, here's a real test. Because it tends mm. to be our autumns are dry. So so it's not over. Is is there consideration of that? But we're noting here the the, the, the second rotation um, in these reports. Is, is that a possible consideration, Joe? It's, I'll, I'll be honest, Your Worship, it's not something I'd considered up until hearing you say it now, but, um, but I think that is a very interesting call out, um, given that the purpose of this project is around the learnings for water irrigation. Um, to date, we've been operating with the, the funding agreement in mind as well, which has had this requirement to have something planted and opening events and so on and so forth um, this side of the new year. Um, a conversation needs to happen between myself and uh, the ministry anyway regarding next steps on this project and um, given that we are pushing out the opening events. Um, and so, yeah, thank you for the idea. I will, uh, I'll definitely discuss that with them and see if it's something that could be palatable. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are there further questions for clarification? Councillor de la Barris Woodcock. Yes, the um, fertilizer being used. Can you uh, talk to what that is? Is it a uh, petrochemical based or or other means of fertilizer? I will be honest, Councillor. That is not something I know the answer to. I'm afraid. Uh, I can happily take it away and find out from Northland Inc. If you like, if that would be of value. Okay. Thank oh, you. Yes, Mr. Wills, you might want to turn off your camera, your audio before you, uh, before you express frustration. Um, so Can I, sorry, Mr. Mayor, sorry, big pardon. I apologize. I should have blanked my screen. Um, these questions, so many of them are such a low minor level. Is it actually relevant to be on a meeting like this as a councillor? Um, these are governance related questions. No, Council they're not, Mr. Mayor. They're, they're, they're to such detail that it's a waste of time to participate. I'm just, I'm not being rude or offensive, but can keep going at, at a management level rather than going into every little detail, please. Please. Sorry. Thank you. And so the important thing is it is up to the elected members to regulate themselves regarding the lines of questioning anyone is taking. Yeah. So. Um, regarding waste of time, if you if you are saying that that something is a waste of time, uh, because this is a formal council meeting, uh, that is potentially a point of order that you're raising. Okay, and there is a process for points of order, uh, which is absolutely permissible. If you say point of order, you know, this is wasting our time, then then as chair, the chair is required 
to address the point of order that you've raised. Okay, thank you. But I mean, you haven't you haven't done no, so in this no, case. No, I'm not doing it. Sorry, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. I should have put my mute button on. I, there's no point of order being raised. I, I'm just sorry. I made an observation that probably should have been done aside rather than through the meeting process. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, elected members, are there any further questions for clarification on this item? Right, no further questions. Thank you. We're into statements. Uh, Councillor Kurnow, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I just want to comment on on this project as as being a a really good um, indication of the challenges of farming for those who who maybe are not farmers who are watching this. Um, it may be giving them some insight into how um, variable and complicated and challenging it can be and how you know a, a bit of a change in the weather can affect the viability um or a whole year's profit so um I'm, I'm interested in this situation from from that perspective as well um i'm glad that northland inc are sort of coming to ideas around that second crop and um look forward to hearing whether there, whether it is viable or whether we do decide to to shift things out of it um, in order to perhaps better demonstrate the benefits of that irrigation. So yeah. Um, yeah, as a respect to the team for their um, developing agility in this space. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Delavaris Woodcock, statesman. Uh, yes, this is a, a very important discussion about this project because it reflects our changing climate and uh, food security issues, because what's happening here, a microcosm of a planting endeavour and agriculture uh, being held back by deluges of rain like no one's ever seen, um, it reflects the perilous state of our uh, world faced with climate change being a reality. What is also a reality is the national policy statement for fresh water management. So questions regarding the type of fertilizer used in this project, which is a pilot, which is set to deliver us lessons and to show Kuiper growers what can be done. Um, it's pertinent and important, and it's very much a big question for governance and not a minor uh, question at all as to whether or not we are going to use uh, petrochemical fertilizers and increase the nutrient runoff based on nitrogen and phosphorus, which is causing such problems for our ecology and our river and freshwater systems. I'm very pleased, Joanne, to get the email update that uh, the soybean seeds, if they are able to be planted, are certified as genetically engineered free. And I'm also very um, satisfied with the way that the Council's taken this project on, is working with multiple stakeholders, including Northland Inc and our iwi partners so there is um there have been multiple holds up in this in this project and it uh you know all the best that we can do from it is actually uh take the lessons to be learnt and use it to reflect on wider decisions and wider leadership for our for our council thank you thank you are there further statements from elected members All right, a quick statement from me. Um, the, as you look around the country, there are very, very few examples of district councils that are involved in projects such as this. Um, Kaipura District Council has become really uh, visionary and leading for the work that it is doing regarding this Kai irrigation project and our entire Kai for Kaipura project um, that this came out of. Um, it's not 
done normal business of councils to be doing this. And yet, as a climate smart council, uh, we're actually getting in their boots and all. Um, we have great expertise around this council table uh, and great experience. And um, and from a governance level, you know, we really uh, have many passions that are coming through in this work, and that's good to see. Uh, in the season that we're in right now, here's just an extra snapshot for anyone who's uh, not aware. The amount of cropping which has taken place, uh, which has actually successfully taken place across all of Northland, including Kaipara District, in the current season is between 5 and 10% of what normally would have been planted successfully by today, the 17th of November. It's between 5 and 10%. Uh, is all we have in the ground. So these are extraordinarily uh, difficult spring season. Uh, this is for thousands and thousands of hectares. Our Kumara industry uh, is has only a fraction of its Kumara planted. They don't even know when Kumara is going to be planted. Uh, the uh, maize industry is is across Northland. Is it? is at less than 5% successfully planted out of about 2,000 hectares of, of a crop. So there are significant climate related issues regarding the weather here. And so it's very interesting that Kaipara District Council is looking at an irrigation project. As I say, uh, it's not going to rain all summer, every day. We have an amazing opportunity for the, uh, if you like, the Indian summer that, that normally now comes uh, for Kaipara District Council to say, here's an irrigation project, here's something we're growing out of season in this extraordinary location with these beautiful soils that would never have been possible before unless Kaipara District Council had picked up its boots and done this work. And I say that leadership opportunity is right in front of us now, and I'm really looking forward to hearing about that as we go forward. I would say regarding opening events for the irrigator can absolutely happen this side of Christmas, come hell or high water as far as I'm concerned, because uh, that specific project is a giant um, token and talisman for uh, the, the courage and the conviction of the council to be working in this space. And that is alongside the Tatai Tokarau Water Storage Trust operating just up the road, uh, whose uh, dams are also coming online through the current season. So there is so much going on in this space. And, and despite the fact it's raining and people can't put the crops in the ground in the spring, uh, there is much, much to be gained here and much to be celebrated. Kia ora. Uh, any further statements from elected members? Councillor Kerno, back to you for a closing statement if you so wish. Really nothing further to add. It's all been said. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, long-winded, Mr. Mayor. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Uh, at this point, we'll put the noting of this to the vote now. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Against. Aye. Carried. Thank you. At this point, we will adjourn the meeting uh, for a morning tea break, uh, and we will resume at 11.15. So that's in 12 minutes' time at 11.15. Thank you, everybody. Uh, kia ora.
Right, at this point, if we have either Councillor Wills, yes, is there, right? We have a quorum, so we're uh, picking up the meeting where we left off with our next item, which is Poto Road Phase 1 Project Update. Thank you. So, Joe, you're back as well. That's all good. We have a quorum of elected members here. So, we're picking up with Poto Road Phase 1 Project. Thank you. I'm seeking uh, a mover for this item. Councillor Wills, thank you. And a seconder for this item. Councillor Kerno, thank you. Right, onto the table. Thank you. Joe. Oh, we've lost Joe, our presenter. Joe, you're back. Thank you. I'm back. Thank you. Um, so, Portal Road Phase 1 is tracking well. Um, the works are still continuing on section one, which you can see on the illustrated map in the report. Um, and they're at the stage of just uh, doing the clearing and some of the enabling earthworks. Section two and three are actually near completion and are just awaiting the seal to be applied. Um, so two and three should be sealed uh, prior to Christmas and section three will be sealed after the Christmas period. Um, all tracking well and within budget. I'll leave it there, Your Worship. Thank you. Sorry. So just if you could just repeat that last bit about the ceilings before Christmas with a map. Sorry, I'm looking at the map now. Sorry, I was trying to get to the map while you were saying it. Ah, yeah. No, of course, that's absolutely fine. Um, so we're hoping for section two and section three to be sealed prior to Christmas. Um, and section three will be after Christmas. Hang on. You just said section two and three prior to Christmas, and then section three after. Can you sorry, yeah, that's make... a bit of an error in my notes. Uh, yep, yeah, sorry, my mistake. Um, so it's section one will be after Christmas, and two and three prior to Christmas. Sorry, my mistake. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so section one is the much longer section. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um. That's clear. Um, elected members, are there questions for clarification? Uh, no question. Uh, Council Wills, thank you. Just for understanding, is like metalling a road is weather dependent? Is tar sealing the road weather dependent? Yes, yes, the weather does play a part um, in that you would not want it too wet, um, particularly. Thank you, thank you. Are there further questions for clarification? No further questions. Thank you, Joe. So, uh, so uh, at this point, it's uh, Councillor Wills for the opening statement here. Thank you. No, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, no, it's great. The whole project's all green. Um, I'll probably just take this opportunity to thank the rest of the council with their support for the extra funding so we can complete this stage. Um, I know the local community is looking forward to it. Um, and um, yeah, and that, it's going to time with the wharf. And it's been um, impressive that they have the COVID hasn't had an effect at this stage on their time frame. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kerno. Nothing. Nothing to add. Thank you. Are there any further statements from elected members here? Um, quick statement from me is again, this is great to see this project with all the green um, flags of the um, traffic light system um, and and very, very positive momentum here and getting seat, some ceiling done prior to Christmas is just great as well. Um, so, uh, looking forward to, you know, as everyone has said, um, as much of this being done prior to the new wharf as possible. Um, so that's very important. Uh, elected members, no further statements. We'll go back to Councillor Wills for a closing statement if you so wish. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. We're putting the noting of this. 
Report to the vote now. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye, aye. Against. Aye. Carried. Thank you. Uh, Poto Road Phase 2. Seeking a mover for this report, Councillor Vincent, thank you. And a seconder for that, Councillor Wills, thank you. Joe. Thank you. Um, and so, Portal Road Phase 2, um, tracking well to be completed now prior to Christmas. Um, the issue that we had been experiencing on this project was that the geotechnical specialist is Auckland based, resides in Auckland and um, an ability to get them up across the border. The team have now put in place a mitigation for this. And so instead of bringing this individual up from Auckland, we're actually using local staff to gather the required information and provide this remotely to the specialist. Um, should there be any specific risks or particular complex issues identified, then we will be looking to use a local geotechnical engineer to do the ground physical assessments, but otherwise we should be able to progress the works as required in this uh, slightly more agile way. Um, so, yeah, tracking for Christmas completion and uh, all going well within budget. And I'll leave it there, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there questions for clarification? No questions for clarification. Okay, thank you. Uh, statements here, Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, next time I'll go off screen when I want to scratch my head. Um, the, um, but this is uh, down the order of priorities in terms of its uh, uh, meeting any uh, timelines and so on. I won't waste your time anymore um, and I commend it to you. Thank you, Councillor Wills. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the only statement is that while it's only this exploratory work and it isn't a priority, um, it would be good to keep abreast of how far away that budget was stretched to complete the task ceiling. So we keep that in the back of our mind if any alternative funding comes available in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there further statements? Okay. It, no, it just. Quickly from me, it's been said before, um, uh, while it is disappointing that the road isn't being sealed all the way to Poto in this current moment in time, this Poto Road Phase 2 report is very important um, for the future because what it does is it is puts um, a very clear design uh, for the future road uh, and all of the specifications for that into um, one neat place as an absolutely ready to go project for the future, which will come. And again, for this council to have done uh, a project such as that significant preparation for that future day um, is a significant milestone uh, in turning um, what could have been a, 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 a non project uh, to advantage for. A rainy day in the future, so uh, it is um, still very, very important. And I'm wishing the the um, the team um, uh, good things to complete this this project on time and and within that budget scope. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. Closing statement, if you would. No, thank you. Oops. Okay. Okay, thank you. So we're putting this to the vote now, the noting of this report. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye, aye, against. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to Waipoa River Road, uh, page 70, I've got 75 of the agenda here, 71. Um, uh, and I'm seeking a Councillor Kurnow moving that, Councillor Delavaris Woodcock seconding that. Thank you. Jo. Thank you. Um, so since the time of writing this report, um, quite a significant positive change for the Waipo River Road project. Um, so in the report, you'll notice that we were pending an archaeological uh, supporting statement um, for the consent that has since been received. Um, and so the project is now underway. Um, 
there was a site blessing held on Waipoa Road um, on Friday of last week. I believe um, your worship, you were in attendance, if I remember correctly. Um, really positive feedback from those involved as well. And uh, just really fantastic to see this project now getting underway. Um, Fulton Hogan are the contractor on this piece, so that contract is fully awarded um, and it is on track for completion um, by, I believe it is March of this year. We'll be looking to complete the construction. Um, and nothing further to add, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there questions for clarification? Councillor Kerno and Councillor Withy. Okay, um, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so um, my question is just around the level of risk um, in the project, because I, I was also there on Friday and um, I have been down that road once before many years ago on a rainy day when it was still a cafe that was open. Um, and so going down there again on Friday, it was, you know, I was reminded about the really sort of extreme nature of the road. Um, and so I'm just interested in your thoughts around the level of risk of you know, unforeseen problems that, that could arise and what work has been done around identifying those and managing those and what degree of confidence do you have that because the budget is still quite tight. Yeah. Yeah, that that is correct, yes. And a, a large part of the rationale behind the direct appointment at Fulton Hogan is they are very familiar in this environment. And um, so they are um yeah experienced operating within the WIPOA and the different constraints that are present there. Um from a safety perspective in particular, um detailed safety audits have been done on the road and on the provo uh, proposed design, provisional design. Um what I would like to address is you'll notice in the report there's the risk around the materials for the traffic light components mm -hmm. due to mm -hmm. supply chain challenges with COVID. Now, to give some reassurance on that end, um, the road would not be built and opened without traffic lights in place. Um, the safety audit recommendation was that safety uh, traffic lights were a requirement due mm -hmm. to the, the nature of that area. Um, the materials which we are concerned around receiving in time relate to the actual timer required within the traffic lights itself. So the sensor which identifies that a car is waiting, it sees mm -hmm. specific materials. So what would happen if we are unable to get these materials in time for completion is the traffic lights will still be installed, mm -hmm. they will still be operational, but they will be operational on a set time. So let's say, for example, every minute it might turn from red to green on both sides, um, as opposed to a smart system that identifies it as a car waiting and then triggers it based on what it receives on the other end. Um, so just to give that clarity and reassurance that the, the road will not be left in a standard that's deemed unsafe. Cool. All right. Thank you. Yep. It's glad to hear. Thank you, Councillor Weddy, then Councillor Vincent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Joe, um, it's great to hear the project is now underway. Now, when Fulton Hogan, if I remember, because there was such a delay on this from the time they put their original quota in, we know that there was very small contingency until we got the extra couple of hundred thousand. But when Fulton Hogan um, reconfirmed their price to complete this project, how was that um, in line with what the original uh, quote had been, or is it was there some slippage there? Uh, Taking into account the the uh, slip on the time frame, um, there was slippage. Um, so the initial response back was higher, um, by by quite a bit actually, um, compared to the original quotation from earlier in the year. Um, full credit to the um where we ended up um goes to Rachel Mannion, the project manager on this piece, um, and her supporting team. Um, Rachel has worked tirelessly to find a way to make this work within budget. Um, to the extent of even um, really managing specifically her own time on the project and the time of others that's allocated to it to ensure that we're being um, as stringent as possible. Um, and she worked very um, well with um, Fulton Hogan to negotiate to a price and a scope that was reasonable and suitable. 
So, so in other words, the you, you remember a lot of our discussions in earlier meetings were around the uh, almost non-existent initial um, contingency, which was then improved by another two hundred thousand dollars to give us the sort of a comfort. With that slippage in the Thornton Hogan price, at what at what what uh, amount of that extra money that was allocated to contingency we still got uncommitted? So the Fulton Hogan contract was around about 1.3 million. Uh, I think I'd, I'd call it 1.34 thereabouts. Um, and the spend to date currently on the project is just under 350,000. So we are not far off that 200 contingency being available within the project. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. Question for clarification. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just want to uh, clear up some confusion in my simple brain. On page report page seventy three, there's um, an element up the top which talks about the component heading and then um, previous month. And it's just there's one box there that's labelled amber but coloured green. And was that a trick question? Um, that is not a trick question. That is a good observation, councillor. Um, so that should be labelled green and coloured green as oh. the budget is now green that the contract has been awarded. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there further questions for clarification on this project? Uh, councillor Joyce Parker, your hand came up there. Kia ora. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thanks, Joe. I'm just curious if you can give us or me some um, some guidance or an update around figure two on page 76, the large Cody directly above Waipa River Road. Who's dealing with that? Is that is that tree actually coming down as part of the project? And is that sitting with Te Roro, a dock, or is that part of our mitigation process to my knowledge that tree is not coming down as part of the process um i believe the image is there to demonstrate just the, the nature of the environment um but if it's okay councillor let me take that away and confirm that and um and if it has been removed then i'll understand just who is responsible as well Thank you, Councillor Joyce Parker. Do you have a further question? Nothing further, Your Honour. Your Your Worship. Well, that's twice today. Thank you. Thank you. Are there further questions for clarification? No further questions. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. So, Councillor Kurnow, statement. Um, yes, sort of. Again, being up there on Friday really reminded me of what an extraordinarily beautiful place the Waipua Forest is, and the um, the centre there is is a is a an also a beautiful place to land before you go to explore that place. Um, and this road enables that to happen in a way that is safe um, or safer. Um, and more manageable for protecting the forest. So, um, yeah, it's quite exciting to be there and to see that this project was now underway and to talk with the archaeologists and talk with the Fulton Hogan and all, all the the other the people who were there to um, show their support for the project. So I'm I'm really glad that we got it to land um, and um, appreciate the significant work that went into getting it to the place where it can actually happen and i um really enjoyed the spirit of collegial partnership that was expressed at that event between you know um Te Roroa and council working together to make this project um become possible um yeah so yeah, really looking forward to getting it done. Um, just by way of risk, I did talk to somebody from WSP and um, also from NTA about the level of risk. And 
ironically, they said because of the delays in getting it to land, they had been able to do much more work than they originally imagined on identifying the risks in the project. And so they had a much higher degree of confidence in the level of risks around the sort of engineering and technical aspects of the road than they perhaps would have had if we'd jumped straight in and gone for it immediately. So sometimes the slow and steady approach um, is, is, has benefits. So yeah, thank you to the team for where we're at with it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Delavaris Woodcock is the second uh, statement. Uh, I think Councillor Kuno has put everything perfectly well that I would have liked to share. Uh, I was unable to be at the Friday Blessing and I heard it was a wonderful event. And um, I would like to point out that if the when the traffic light is in place, that it will be the one and only and first traffic light in the whole of Kuiper District. So that in itself is an amazing thing. And that's it for me on this item. Thank you. Thank you. Are there further statements from elected members here? A uh, quick statement from me. Uh, yes, it, it was great to be at the uh, blessing event for the commencement of the works on the road. Um, Shane Jones was there, and of course, he was the, the man who provided the money uh, for this project. Council's done a great job of holding, holding the line and holding the project together and catching the project, if you like, and keeping it keeping it rolling as the road controlling authority. Um, uh, there is great promise here. Um, and as Councillor De La Varis Woodcock just said, the very first set of traffic lights for Kaipara District, which is just a great irony in the middle of the beautiful Waipoa Forest, um, the least likely place to have the first set of traffic lights. So um, it, it is going to be quite extraordinary. But um, um, it, the project partners are all in alignment and agreement, and it all looks to be um, as good as it possibly can be at this point. So congratulations to the team and um, and well done to the elected members of the council for holding out on the principles that we've held out on here regarding um, the contingency and those discussions around the ownership of the road so far. So yes, yeah, kia ora koutou. Uh, any further statements from elected members? Councillor Kurnow, a closing statement, if you wish. Um, nothing significant to add other than I'm not sure I'm actually celebrating traffic lights in Kaipara, but I do note that it is the first and only set. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're hearing that. I, I, I'm from the old school that celebrates everything possible passing by. So <laughs> we'll celebrate or, or take it um, for now. Uh, thank you. We're putting the, the noting of this to the vote now. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Against. Carried. Thank you. Kuiper Wharves, Joe. Uh, so uh, I'm happy to move this item. I'm seeking a seconder for this. Councillor Wills, thank you. Joe. Thank you. Um, so I'll start with Pahi Wharf. Um, Pahi Wharf is tracking well to schedule, and we believe we're on target for completion prior to Christmas. Um, so a couple of days slippage we're targeting now, I believe it's the 19th of December as opposed to the 17th, but contracts are still confident that we can make that pre-Christmas um, completion, which um, from a from a safety perspective of that wharf over that busy Christmas period is fantastic to not have an open construction site. So that's really um, what well, is very front of mind with everyone on this piece of work. Um, there are a couple of additional items to the project um, scopes that have been identified as being required. Um, one of which is a step timber which requires repair, which was um, so low into the water that it was only actually identified on a particular low tide. Um, which was experienced recently. So that's been worked through with the team and an abutment as well. So connecting the wharf to the ground. Um, so an extra piece of work there. That's been worked through by the project manager 
um, and will be managed through the existing um, budget also. Um, we have then um, reached out to the um, Prime Minister um, with the hope of um, inviting her along to do a formal opening of Pahi Wharf um, in the attempt to tie it into the opening of um, the Hunter Visor, which is set to occur in Funerary in December also, all going to plan. Um, we're still awaiting any formal response or confirmation regarding whether or not that will be possible, um, but the team is trying to see what we can do. Um, to get her out there. Um, obviously, all things current environment permitting as well, um, which needs to be taken into account. Um, the team have reviewed whether or not it would be of value doing an event um, later on the Regatta Club um, fishing day. Feedback so far has been that actually, if the wharf is already open and in use at that time, then having an opening event a month afterwards is not necessarily of value, but that, that might well be something that can just be an event of its own for the Regatta Club itself, rather than that opening event per se. Um, so an event just to really showcase the wharf, I suppose, as opposed to open. Um, because we're conscious that we do want to ensure that we get the site properly blessed and properly opened before the public start to use it over that busy period as well. Um, so more to come in that space, um, and you can expect to hear from Ruby, no doubt, in the communication side as things get formalised. But I just wanted to give you all an update as to what we're looking at at this point in time. Um, regarding Portal Wharf, um, so SDF are continuing to do the detailed design, um, and everything tracking well on that piece. The, the only real risk um, regarding um, Portal at this point is the potential success of their application to cross the border, SCF being an Auckland-based um, organisation. Um, we are supporting their application. It has not yet been submitted. It's still in progress. Um, but we have had a much more positive turnaround of late um, with the applications being submitted through the ministry where it's required for works on projects. Um, so I'd class that risk as amber at this point in time as opposed to red. Um, there is also with Portal the ongoing risk regarding to budget, and that is just due to us being unable to really lock down the budget until this design piece is completed. So until SDF have came back with a thorough detailed design, um, and then they will do pricing on that basis, repricing on that basis rather, um, we'll keep that risk there as amber for the budget, just because there are still some unknowns. And I'll leave it there, Your Worship. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Elected members, are there questions for clarification? Um, I I have a question, and it is it is regarding the the point you've raised about the opening of the Pahi Wharf, which is one of the immediate things that's in front of us. Um, the um, ceremonial opportunity. Um, may be different from the, the technical opening, um, the ceremonial opportunity with the Prime Minister in, in a, anniversary weekend, because there's a very large crowd of people there. Um, and that would has a parallel with the original opening of the current wharf by David Longy, as Prime Minister back in 19... I'm going to say it was 1987 that that opening took place, um, and so um, the even though the formal blessing, the the, the theoretical blessing if, to make the wharf safe may occur in December prior to Christmas, um, then there is still an opportunity for a different event. Yeah. Um, but and how did I? So I would say because the prime minister and the government of the nation looks to Northland in that period of time, in that January, early February period, um, and that lines up almost exactly that will be three years in the same week since the money was given for the construction of what ultimately became that wharf. So there's a very nice kind of a 
uh, symbolism with that. So I would I would urge that people, even though the official opening to make the wharf uh, safe and culturally safe for people across the summer um, is one thing, but there may be a ceremonial moment in, a, in another. The second thing is this: you mentioned the um, the nineteenth, the the project completion date being the nineteenth of December, or opening date. That's that's a Sunday. Prior, the Sunday prior to Christmas. Um, is is that what you meant to say, or are we, um, or, or or is it in that kind of Christmas week moment? Um, uh, and what would be the other options? Sorry, into that week uh, regarding. So that? sorry. Yeah, to, to clarify, when I was saying the 19th, that wasn't the intended date for an opening event. The opening event and any intended date is still being worked through with the team. Um, and that will be based on the COVID restrictions and the Prime Minister's response or Prime Minister's office response um, and so forth. Um, when saying the 19th, that's the date that we're working through with our contractors as far as the physical work's being concluded. Um, so they'll be viewing it as a by end of week 19th. Um, just to be clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That is clear. That's very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Delavaris Woodcock. Uh, for the sake of completeness, I would like to ask of you this question, Joanne. Um, the annual wharf safety assessments and maintenance maintenance costs of these three wharves, Pahi, Potor, and Dargaville Pontoon, have they been budgeted for as costs in the long-term plan? Pahi Wharf, as part of the purchase agreement between the Regatta Club and Council, the maintenance obligation sits with the Regatta Club um, for Pahi Wharf. Um, and they have been quite keen to retain the maintenance um, as they, they have quite a strong connection to the wharf and the history there. Um, regarding the other two, um, so the Dargaville Pontoon currently been live and operational. So that's currently captured under the um, existing operations team. Um, and Portal Wharf, that's something that we'll be working through with the operations team as well to understand what they need to budget for it. So you're saying that that will come uh, for an annual ratepayers cost for those inspections? Uh, I'm not entirely sure how it will be structured. To be quite honest, councillor. Um, so that's something that we need to work through to understand. I don't want to say either way at this point. Thank you. Thank you, councillor Wills. Mm -hmm. Question for clarification. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the design process that's been approved on the Poto Wharf. Have there been any significant changes over the original plan that was presented to the community of Poto? No, councillor. Um, so the design is um, really getting into the geotechnical side of things uh, now. So it's uh, much more detailed. The concept has remained the same. Yeah. So, so there's no change in the scale of it or the or the shape. The design. Okay. Well, and one more question, please. Um, the community meeting at Polo that's been designated for the end of January, February. If it's possible to have it in January, it will have a much greater participation. Subject to the COVID clearance of all of a lot of the holiday makers, I just bring that point up. Um, we had a recent meeting at Poto for the hall, community hall, and no one showed up because it it was outside a holiday period. Okay, the, thank you for that feedback. I will make sure and share that with the team. So January being the preferred time frame for that meeting. Well, the last week in January would be better than the first week of February. Okay. Okay. And they'd be able to come to the Pahi Wharf opening as well at the same time and cross the harbour and just to see how exciting it's going to be at Poto as well at the same time if it happens then. Hey, Councillor Wills, thank you. Are there further questions for clarification? Uh, I had, so I have a question regarding Poto. Um, so the, the design and the land side design of the land width end um of the the engineering um has the have the elected members of this committee seen a full um drawing of of exactly what that's going to look like 
Um, I don't believe it's ever been presented through this forum. I believe it's only been presented through the community engagement days for the project. So if you like your worship, I can include that in next month's update pack. That would be good. Thank you. So the second question, and it links with Councillor Wills, is is there any change in any of that? If, if there is community consultation which occurred, that, so the designs that are on that those papers are what is going to be happening. Correct? Yes, so we I'll share next month the designs of what will be happening. There's been no significant changes to the design based on what was shared with the community um, to date. And the other item worth noting is that we do engage the WARFs advisory group, which involves members from the portal community as well, um, in any discussions around project scope or amendments and just general progress of the project. Um, thank you. Thank you. So uh, that would be very good. Thank you for for completeness and understanding. Thank you. Are there further questions, elected members, for clarification? And Councillor De Varis Woodcock has dropped out. Okay, so is Council? I'm not sure you can still hear Councillor De Varis Woodcock, but we'll just assume uh, that you're absent from the meeting until you return. Thank you. Um, uh, at this point, oh, Councillor De Varis Woodcock has now returned. Welcome, welcome back. Uh, yes, we can see you, Councillor De Varis Woodcock. Thank you. Uh, no further questions for clarification at this point. No further questions. Thank you. So statements, uh, statement from me. Um, these uh, the war projects very very uh, important, and uh, uh, it is wonderful to uh, have the progress that we have. Um, this is the beginning of. Um, um, of a network of new modern wharves with these pontoons that go up and down. And that's a significant step forward for Kaipara District and community access and safety uh, regarding the harbour. So um, we've never had anything like this and the uh, um, council is doing really a great uh, work here. So um, wishing the wharves project team well and the new project management team well uh, because noting that Jagdeep Singh is no longer with us um, and because of uh, the uh, yeah busy times for engineers in New Zealand. So um, well done everyone for getting this um, uh, such rapid progress and good luck with Pahi. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wills. Yeah, thanks Mr. Mayor. Just um, it's a um, physical sign of council's involvement, particularly in the smaller communities like Pahi and Podo, and the other work that's been done. And it's great that we're spreading that funding out across right across the district. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there further statements from the elected members? No further statements. All right, thank you. We'll put this to the vote now about the noting of the report on the wars. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Carried. Thank you. That's the wars project done. Thank you. Uh, now we are on to the stop bank. Dargaville to Tikopuru stop bank item here. And I'm seeking a mover for this item. Thank you. Councillor Kurnow, thank you, and a seconder for this item. Councillor Wills, thank you. Uh, Joe. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so following on from last month's committee session, um, I'll just draw your attention to the updated information in the project background. We have attempted to make it more specific and clearer regarding what the scope of this project consists of. Um, as there was a bit of ambiguity around that in the past, or a bit of confusion. Um, the project itself is still in the planning phase, um, and we are in the process of reviewing uh, procurement plans in particular, um, to enable to go out and engage consultants to start the investigation and design works. Um, we do have a new project manager assigned to this project uh, by the name of Nush Todd Jones. 
Uh, Noosh is a new employee to Council. Um, she joined the delivery team uh, just a matter of four, three, four weeks ago now. Um, coming from WSP previously, um, she herself has a geotechnical background um, and really experienced project manager, having worked on some of the larger projects across the Whangarei, uh, Whangarei region. Um, so real asset for us to um, get on board within Council and I think a, a safe pair of hands for this project and the one that we'll speak to next. Um, the team themselves are in the process of uh, establishing their community engagement strategy also and working through to identify all of the relevant external stakeholders and interested parties on this project to ensure that we do a good community um, collaboration and engagement from the get-go. And as mentioned prior, we have onboarded um, a community engagement advisor who will be specifically assigned to this project and also the Ralpo Upgrade project. Um, there is a challenge regarding timeframes for this project, um, and that's just due to the, the requirements of the funding agreement is that we start construction within 12 months of the funding agreement having been awarded. Um, now, this funding agreement was awarded in September, and due to the nature of the works being um, works that you would do in the summer, dry season, that means that we need to target this dry season to start the construction works. So we don't have the luxury of waiting until the next dry season. Um, the team's very aware of that, and that's the plan that we are working to, and that's the plan that our procurement is geared up around as well. Um, but that would be the, the current risk, is just the programme. It's going to be a, a, a a tight few months to get us into a good spot. And I'll leave it there. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm delighted to hear there's a project manager now for this work in an engineering space. Um, I have a simple question for you. Is Does the LIDAR work that the Northern Regional Council has completed, is that useful for um, Assessing the levels of these things so is a very detailed question. Sorry. Um, I believe that that amongst all information available would be with the consultants as part of their analysis. Whether or not that specifically is of value, I wouldn't know to be honest, Your Worship. Okay, thank you, thank you, Councillor Kerno. Yeah, just two two questions. I, I sort of seem to remember when this project was first sort of thought about, there was a collaboration with uh, a sort of heavy vehicle or heavy machinery training program um, that was being run. I think at one stage was going to be run out of Dargaville, but may now be running out of Whangarei. So I'm just wondering, has that sort of gone by the wayside or is that still part of this in terms of creating an opportunity for people who are learning how to drive diggers, et cetera, to yeah, have a real life project. Yeah, so the, the social outcomes are still the primary objective okay. of this project. Um, and that means, you know, reaching out um, across to give opportunities, really. Um, and so that will be worked through as part of the procurement strategy when we um, start reviewing that construction phase. Yep. Whether or not it will be specifically that organisation, that will be yet to be determined. Yeah, but that, that is still a focus. Good. Um, and then the second question is the design process. What what is the what's the process for making those decisions around design? You know, because I think we've talked about we're not even sure exactly which stretch of the stock bank, you know, where it begins and ends. And and is there going to be an engagement with the community? Because obviously if we're going to be building it this summer, that's very tight. So how how's that going to work? It would be, to be clear, um, it would be enabling works done this summer as opposed to building the stock bank itself, um, just for clarity on that particular point. Thank um, you. And regarding the design itself, I'll draw attention to the um, page 88 of the report and the project background section. Um, yeah. And it details there specifically around the design of what we'll be looking to undertake. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Are there further questions for clarification? No further questions for clarification. Thank you. Uh, statements. Thank, so thank you, Joe. Um, statements, Councillor Kurnow. 
Um, yeah, this is an incredibly important piece of work in terms of starting the journey towards protecting our communities from um, the effects of rising sea level, etc. Um, and so I'm really excited to see this as a first stretch of the stock bank that's really getting a focus on not just sort of enhancing it, but actually enhancing it with a view to that longer term impact. Um, and even if we don't build it as high, we're building it to the width to be able to accommodate that. So yeah, very interested to see that as, as a first step. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Wills as the seconder here, statement. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, uh, um, it's great to see it tying in or the, the, the mutual benefit of this project tying in with the Taitaipara water storage um, and the potential water coming into those flats and through to Dargaval. So there's, there's more than just the ben direct benefit of this construction, there's also that additional potential benefit. Thanks. Thank you. Are there further statements? A uh, statement from me is a statement in um, regarding the district plan review, uh, which is an entirely separate project of the council, but it follows on exactly from what Councillor Wills just said. Um, as this work is now taking place, um, regarding this stop bank and regarding the piece of soil between Kolpuru and Dargaville and that work. There is potential for our, um, our spatial plan document to uh, be revised and be looked at in a more uh, joined up way with this project in view. I don't know when the council would get to doing that. Um, but but I certainly I put that idea out there into the ether and to all of the um, team executive team that I know are just burning to find new projects because they don't have enough going on. Sorry, that was a sarcastic comment. Um, they have plenty going on, of course. Um, uh, but this project regarding that area, when the Taitogara Water Storage Project uh, water is flowing, there is the great potential for a large new area of Dargaville um, and Tukopuru to be expanded in this location uh, and with reticulated water. And that is something that as we're looking at our district plan review, it may be beyond the horizon of the current district plan, um, but certainly uh, we need to be pointing towards that future uh, of saying that the potential of this project leads to uh, outcomes that we can't yet see uh, in that space. So uh, there's certainly um, both protecting what we already know and also um, developing for a, a larger future for industry uh, in Kaipara district uh, behind the stop bank, not necessarily housing, but, but, but industry. Um, so it's another story for another day, but but it is certainly related to this project. Thank you. Uh, are there any further statements from elected members? No further statements. We'll go to Councillor Kuno for a closing statement, if you wish. Nothing further to add. Okay, thank you. So we're putting this to the vote now, the noting of this. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye, aye. Against carried. Thank you. Moving on, Joe, to the uh, the Raupo upgrade project update. And so I'm seeking a mover for this report. Councillor Vincent, thank you. And a seconder for this. Councillor Kurnow, thank you. Joe. Thank you. Um, so for the Raupo upgrades project, um, so Nush Todd Jones, whom I mentioned just earlier, um, is the newly assigned project manager for this piece of work also. So again, benefiting from her technical expertise and background on this piece. Um, this project also in the planning phase. And again, I would just draw attention to the project background section. 
um, where I've put more specifics around the project scope, just to provide additional clarity on exactly what is being delivered through this project and through the funding provided by the Ministry. Um, similar to the previous project, um, we are in the phase of going through the procurement and reviewing our initial procurement plans for um, consultancy engagement and in, uh, developing our community engagement plans as well um, to ensure that we um, start strong in that space with our community engagement advisor. Um, there is definitely a need for um, some additional um, design and investigation work still to be done in the RALPO upgrade project, um, so that will be where this team is starting regarding the time frame. And this project also carries the same challenges as the one mentioned prior of starting construction within that 12 month period. So again, we'll be targeting to start some form of construction over this dry summer period. Um, but again, most likely enabling works as opposed to the full scale operation itself. And I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So are there questions for clarification? Councillor Kuno, your hand is raised at this point. I do apologise. I didn't take it down from the last one. Okay, thank you. So it's not a question for clarification. All right. Thank you. Uh, so I have a question for clarification. The community engagement advisor, is that someone who's already within the council system or is that a new, a new person joining the team? It is a new person who joined, um, so Gillian's team, she sits in the um, communications team. Um, uh, just over a month ago now, about a month and a half ago, um, she's uh, called Nari Rolston. Rolston. Um, I comes from a teaching background, um, lives within the Kaipara herself, um, very passionate for the work that we're doing here. Um, so yeah, we're real fortunate to be able to bring her on board to support both these projects. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Weddy, question for clarification. Yes, thank you, Mr. Bear. Joe, you've mentioned the new project manager taking uh, these two stop back projects on. Tell me, is the um, funding that we've got this from the IRB? Is that uh, is the cost of that funding of, of cost of that project manager recovered out of the funding for these two projects? It is, yes, councillor. Um, so across the delivery team now, um, just for transparency, we um we allocate timesheets um right. for a time assigned to projects and then it's back charged that way. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So this is capacity building for the council, if you like. Yeah. Thank you. Uh Councillor Dilavaris Woodcock, question for clarification. Yes, my question, Joe, is the uh, mention in the report of further environmental uh assessments or investigations to be completed uh why why were these not done in order to support the funding application in the first place it seems to me a bit the wrong way around that the money's been uh, uh committed but there hasn't been a full in environmental impact assessment or feasibility study done can you talk to me? Can, can I ask, Councillor, could you direct me to the specific part of the report you're referring to, if you wouldn't mind? Uh, I can't see it on my screen right now. No, it's in I mean, on page, uh, oh gosh, I've only got page 93, sorry. So this is page, page the, the second page of your table report in the project background. Uh, and there, the, the bottom paragraph of project background includes a planning and ecological assessment to confirm any consenting requirement and or additional environmental study will be undertaken as mm. first. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. I appreciate that. Um, yes, yeah, so that, this work is to be done to help understand what the requirements will be for the consenting piece. Um, there would naturally be a cost attributed to this work as well. Um, which I believe is why it is only initiated um, when the funding and the, the spend for the project is available. Um, so I've always been curious about it, you know, like it seems to me, can you confirm, Joe, is this a unique project of its kind? How, how do you mean by unique, councillor? Is it unique for us as a council at this point in time? 
Yes, that is yes. the only one in our best nature. In other districts of, of New Zealand where there's land drainage, the use of a, of a floodgate to stop uh, seawater intrusion and the, the use of that, that seems like a, um, a, mod, a, a novel use of engineering. I'm wondering if there's a, um, if the project manager comes with expertise of having installed such a design before. Um, ironically, actually, the previous project manager, Jack Deep Singh, had installed um, similar designs um, in Fiji over his career. Um, he was quite experienced in that space. So we've had the fortune of his expertise in the project's infancy. As mentioned, um, Nushi's background is geotechnical, um, which is a real asset to these projects as well. But, but we've lost our expert in the floodgate design engineer, so I understand. Is that correct? Nush does not bring experience in designing floodgates, but to be clear, even with Jagdeep's background around that, the design would still be outsourced to a specialist, a current specialist who is used to doing this operation within New Zealand. Okay, so there are, there are other operations of the sort within New Zealand then? That's not something I can confirm, actually. I know there are other operations of this sort globally. Um, I know even of instances uh, across back home in the UK. Um, I'm not familiar enough with um, how areas manage um, this across New Zealand, I'm afraid. Oh, well, that, that would be great if you could get any background for the next report for the next month's update. That would be great. Thank you, Joe. Happily, yep. Thank you. Are there further questions for clarification? Uh, just and just noting in the chat box um, there in in partial answer to Councillor Delavaris Woodcock's question, uh, uh, Tracy Dean says that there is a flood big floodgate at Pyro and a stop stop um, floodgate system there. He says that sorry that's an indication of pipe floodgate. As you can see, oh, engineering is not my strongest point. Um, uh, and talking with my hands uh, with diagrams. So uh, there are certainly examples from across New Zealand. Uh, perhaps elected members may, may be able to create a compendium of those as they go. And so that we can all, and once the border with Auckland opens, it would be lovely to go and have a field trip for um, down country if we can get south of Auckland to go and see such floodgates and systems, possibly. Um, that's another story. Are there further questions for clarification? No further questions for clarification. Thank you. So, uh, Councillor Vincent, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't have a question for clarification, but in terms of uh, speaking oh, to this motion. Um, motion. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, me. I. Um, I do think there is something that does need to be clarified in terms of the, the status of the land, which is um, protected by the, the current drainage district um, you know, stop bank network and so on. Um, in terms of what the uh, regional council uh, sea level and prospect of sea level rise indications are through their um, planning work, I think was that using LIDAR information? Um, and also, uh, the what the district plan review also has to relate to to the uh, any restrictions on the use of the land uh, impounded by the stop bank network. So um, that is outside the scope of this project, but it's something that those other um, documents need to take into account. I would suggest. So I I think it's a um, in principle, it's a simple solution, and I think quite a clever one, and I'm really keen to see this uh, make good progress. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kerno. Um, yeah, I, I can confirm that indeed floodgates are used extensively um, in New Zealand, um, where there's uh, a reasonable amount of low-lying, highly productive lands that are protected by drainage networks. Um, and I know this because I did a governance review in, um, in a former life of 
the um, drainage districts across New Zealand and we spoke to every single council that had one. Um, so this is not unusual to do this. Um, I hear what Councillor Vincent says around there being wider issues around the use of land. However, this is dealing with a, an immediate problem, which is primarily around the silting up of the drainage network. Um, and so this floodgate will prevent that silting up, which will reduce costs on the drainage district around needing to um, machine clean those affected drains on such a regular basis. So there's there's an immediate need, um, but yes, those, those sort of wider long-term implications need to be worked through with the community. And I imagine will be when we get to this particular community around our climate adaptation work. Um, yeah, so really pleased to see this happen. It will improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the existing drainage network. And it's really good to have it, have the funding to be able to do it. I know um, certain members of the um, drainage committee have been wanting to do this for decades. Um, and so this is a very another one of those very long time coming projects that's really good to see. So yeah, that's my my views on it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there further statements from elected members? Councillor Delavaris Woodcock. Oh yes, I'm concerned that uh, Councillor Kuno has mentioned that this is uh, providing a specific reduction in targeted rates for a certain portion of the district. I don't think that that should be um, championed. Uh, I've always been concerned that we need to have a um, equitable and criteria-based system to deal with the district-wide problem of flood, sea level rise, flooding, Nevertheless, uh, this project uh, seems to be interesting and I will follow it with great interest. Thank you. Thank you. Are there further statements? Okay, no further statements. Thank you. Uh, we'll Back to Councillor Vincent for a closing statement here. You're on mute, Councillor Vincent. I have nothing to add. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, uh, right, we're putting this to the vote now regarding noting of this report. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. Carried. Thank you. Moving on to out of our specific projects into the final two pro, uh, reports here. The first of which is the overview, the financial overview, uh, Joe. And so we're seeking a mover for this item. Thank you, Councillor Delavaris Woodcock, and a seconder for this. Thank you, Councillor Kerno. Very good. Uh, sorry. It, hands are raised there so so they they get taken as being read thank you uh joe thank you thank you um nothing for retard on this report your worship it um repeats the information already provided in the individual reports thank you thank you question for clarification from councillor withy <laughs> yes thank you mr mayor look joe this is just really applies to both um the um the summary of the expenditure plus the next slide, which is the time frames, just for ease of quickly reviewing these, is it possible to um, mark up or, or make a, a clear indication if there's any changes from one month to the next? This is particularly um, valid on the next one, which is on, on uh, openings. We're getting into the last 12 months of this term, and there are a number of these projects that are um, running towards their completions and obviously opening dates are going to become important for everyone so that we can diary them and, and be in attendance. But um, if there's any change, uh, just looking at this, you've got to go through it line by line and compare it with last month. If we had it marked up or in a different colour or something, when a change is made, it would be so much easier for us to interpret. 
Yeah. Could we have a look at that, thanks? Absolutely. Yep, leave it with us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Are there further questions for clarification of the financial overview? No further questions. Right. Uh, thank you. I'm going to say it was Councillor Delavaris Woodcock moved this. Yes. Uh, yes, I can sum up by saying that um, as each one of these project items was discussed, we all noted the um, overruns and budget or shortfalls um, so that's repeated there for everyone to see in a table and that's sufficient for my statement thank you thank you and councillor kerno i have nothing to add thank you and are there any further statements from elect members here no further statements but councillor with you may want to lower your raised Electronic hand. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And no further statements. Thank you, uh, Councillor Delavaris Woodcock. You'll be satisfied with your uh, opening In, statements. Indeed, Mr. Mayor. No further okay. statement. No further statement. Thank you. So we're putting the noting of this financial overview report. We're putting this to the vote now. All those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye, aye. Aye. Carried. Thank you. Right, and now for the. Final item, the program update. I'm happy to move this and I'm seeking a seconder here. Councillor Weddy, thank you. Joe. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, again, nothing further to add on this report. It replicates the expected completion dates of the milestones as provided in the individual status reports. Great, thank you. Uh, are there any questions for clarification here? We've covered, I mean, we've covered all of the work in detail, but it's, it's always good to see it in, in one place. Are there any questions for clarification elected members? Um, I have a question uh, and it relates to the, uh, the periods I'm going to say September, October, and November next year. Um, there is forecast to be a, an election of the council. So you have some opening events then. And I just I just indicate that there is an election period and there's also an election so that some of these faces may change um, and the leadership may change. Um, and I'm sure all these elected members, no matter what, would be happy to be celebrating um, these events. Um, so I just, uh, while they're still in office, that's all I'd say. Um, so um, it, there is a bit of a request there, if there's anything that could be done regarding that. But uh, you might need to talk with the governance team uh, regarding the uh, stand down period regarding uh, elected members and what they're allowed to be seen to be doing and not doing as well in advance of an election. So it's not just election day, but it's like months beforehand as well. Um, but it's an in interesting point when we look at this calendar, because there is so much coming up. It's very exciting. You see it all in one place. Very exciting. Uh, are there further questions for clarification elected members on the program overview update? No further questions. So the statements will just leave the thing that I just made as my statement. Thank you. Uh, uh, and uh, I just would like to also thank Joe and the team for um, an extraordinary body of work that we're seeing coming through here with with delivery. And that's what we're after. We're getting action. Uh, and we're getting projects done in a way that Kaipara District Council uh, has never seen projects of such a scale as this. And this governance committee um, with the community, this transparency um, coming across the top of all of this is, is very, very significant indeed. This is 
uh, the most fun, not the ex fun committee, but the most fun committee by far, I'd say, for the council. So, uh, uh, congratulations, Joe, because it all wraps up in this report. Yeah, so it's it's good to see. Um, any further statements, elected members? No further statements. Thank you. So we're putting the noting of this report to the vote now. So all those in favour, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Again. Aye. Carried. Thank you. So that report is noted, which now concludes our agenda for today. Um, so that brings us to the end of the externally funded projects committee agenda for the 17th of November. And uh, it's. Uh, uh, I was going to say, by the time we get to the December meeting, we're right on Christmas. So, uh, it's one, it will be one of the last meetings prior to Christmas. So, but there is a lot. Going on uh, in this space. And uh, so, uh, wishing uh, Joe, wishing you and all the project teams well uh, for this very, very busy push during the period between now and Christmas. It's a key time. So, the less talking you get from us, probably right now, the better, um, because we've we've had our um, governance oversight uh, today here, um, and and we're just looking forward to you all getting on with the job. And delivering for the, the good people of Kaipara. Uh, thank you. So at this point, I'd like to thank everyone for your attendance. Uh, if the elected members could just stay on for a moment after the conclusion of the meeting as well. Thank you. But I'm going to close now with a karakia. Kia tōna manakitanga a te mea ngaro, ki runga ki teina, ki teina a tātou, ki a mahia te hua makihi kihi. Kia toi te kuku, toi te mana, toi te aroha, toi te reo Māori, tīhei Māori ora. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Uh